tires to that last descent. Try not to throw up. Reflecting on the thought processes and the emotional challenge that I had along the way during that night, it makes me very proud to be sitting here having seen it through. He's come out of this today knowing more about what he's capable of than he did at the beginning of the week. Bikes have failed, both gears. I think I've, I've started hallucinating a little oh, bit as well. Oh, you fuck. There's, there's the journey, there's the point, you know, and the fear is constant and necessary. I'm Fergus Crawley, I'm 26 years old and I have been a Gymshark athlete for coming up to 18 months at this point. So my background is in strength and ultra endurance, but a few of the things that I've achieved that I'm most proud of. Yeah! I am one of two people, I believe, that successfully squatted 500 pounds and ran a sub five minute mile in the same day. Exactly one year on from that, I used the same premise and did a 1200 pound powerlifting total straight into a sub 12 hour Ironman. Six months after that, I did a 600 kilo powerlifting total straight into a sub six hour 60 kilometer ultra marathon. I've ran out of ideas, so here we are looking to take on a double extreme Ironman distance triathlon. So a traditional iron distance triathlon is a 3.8K swim, a 180K bike, and a 42.2 kilometer run, better known as a marathon. They're traditionally done on faster, flatter, more pleasant environments. We're in Snowdonia. It's not very flat, it's not very fast, it's pleasant but with that comes a lot of elevation on the bike and the run. So that's what makes an extreme iron distance triathlon difference to a regular one, but we're doing that twice. Fear has led me to uncomfortable places in a good and a bad way, but I think reframing my understanding of fear has given me a freedom that I'm very grateful to have. Fear is an opportunity to do better, and fear comes from a place of reluctance, apprehension, and the unknown, ultimately. So the biggest difference uh, between the triathlons he's done before and this triathlon just now is that because it's, it's lapped, it's, he's not swimming the full length of a body of water, he's lapping a, a certain area. Uh, there's a mandatory requirement that he comes out every two laps. That could be good in people's minds, give him a rest, but actually it takes him kind of out of the flow a little bit. I view projects like this as very empowering for me because it, it reminds me of what was and now what is. Because there was a point in my life where I didn't want any more days. The event in itself, I want it to represent much more than that. I want it to represent the commitment and value that comes from taking one step forward and another and another and the momentum that builds because six years ago, I would rather be dead than spend another day on this planet. The, the, the fact that that is a reality that I'll carry with me forever is something I'll never be able to understand. Half done. 120. So what I want people to take away from this is that the point I am here is a point that a version of me two, three, four, five years ago would have laughed in your face if you'd suggested that this is where we'd be sitting now talking about this event. So I think it's a relative scale of don't look at this experience, this journey that I'm about to go on and think, oh, I could never do that. Because all I want people to take away from it is that swimming five yards in the open water or going to a pool for the first time since you were 12 years old is the exact same level of achievement in my mind. 2.53, seven minutes behind predicted, I'll take it. Doing mass in my head on the swim on the bike. There's no, there's no good outcome. <laughs> it's gonna be a long time either way, but I think if I can if I can sit at 
Between 25 and 27 for the bulk of it. I'll be exactly where I want to be. So we've just had a call from another competitor's support to say that Fergus, his electric gearing has broken down on his um, the bike that he's using. So we're going to have to go and kind of deal with that mechanical, maybe swap bikes out. So we're a bit of a rush, bit of a uh, it's, it's a problem, but we can fix it. Complete that with my control. <laughs> like it is, it is what it is, and it's it wouldn't happen. be extreme if shit didn't go wrong, would it? If it's going to happen. We have a tendency to carry when things go wrong as baggage. So a previous version of me would have viewed a negative lap or a bad lap or a lap that hadn't gone to plan as disaster. And I would have then got into a negative headspace and let that tear me apart. Whereas now I look at the ownership that I have over why that was a bad lap and review what I can do next to make it a good lap. Bikes have failed, both gears. Okay. This one's fixed, but the fucking road bike's not working. Oh, you fucking wank, why is that happening? It sounds made up. We've got a proper mechanic on it. All you need to do is keep the energy in, and keep yourself moving, and keep your head in this particular game. Two bikes and tech, modern tech in the bike has let me down on both due to things that ultimately I couldn't have predicted nor controlled. It's just happened today. So I, 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 I did lose my cool a little bit. I've, I've lost my head a little bit momentarily, but just distilled it down to what what is it? What is actually the situation? I have a bike that works so I can crack on. When you're presented with the unknown, you're embracing discomfort on somebody else's terms because it's the unpredictability of it. I can obviously plan and prep for events like this one on my terms, but it's when the unexpected gets thrown at you, you're forced to take stock, think, and actually find a bit more about who you really are in those situations. It's the darkness and the loneliness and, and all the rest of it as well, as well as the physical effort. So I think he's going to find it hardest in the dead of night, which is as poetic as it gets. Uh, Fergus and I had a little bit of a chat off camera. He went back out there as the sun set. We had an absolutely beautiful lap. The fact that that's actually been his fastest lap, he is a great spirit. So we're just going to head out now into the deep end of the early end of lap five, catch him again, see how he is, run the sport again. As the demands increased, my love for the surroundings of each lap wore thin because everything was the same lap on lap. So as the physical demand, the emotional demand and the context of the race itself, I almost became a bit resentful to my settings at certain points, especially on the bike because a lap would take me about two hours and then we'd have stoppage time, we'd have check-in time and we lost over two hours to mechanical issues on the bike. We're on lap eight of eight. So the last 40 or so kilometers of 360 kilometers, Fergus has to do. And he is tired. I think I'm, I've started hallucinating a little bit as well. Like every car I see, I see a person there. Yeah. And then I'm there's no one there. I need to get some food on because I can't, I've just not been able to eat on the bike. Spent the entirety of that last descent trying not to throw up. Yeah, it was like I was dizzy. It was weird. I don't know if you noticed, I was not as in control on that descent. The moment the light came up on Sunday morning on the bike was one of the most beautiful scenes I've ever seen. Low mist to wake me up on a Sunday morning having spent the whole night riding the bike reaffirms, as I say, that nature does make me feel small. When he, when he gets to sunrise, when he eventually comes through this darkness, not figurative, the real darkness that he's in, he needs to take a moment somehow to try and look on it um, as a gift, as, as, uh, as, as being a moment for him, really kind of take the time to experience it because... He's worked so hard through the darkness and to see the morning come. Proves that he beat the night those negative thoughts, those dark thoughts in his head, and there's going to be nothing more figurative than the sunrise to say, right, you're still here, you've done it, you've done this part, you've come through. 
Not quite sure how I'm going to get anything done, let alone a mountain and an ultra on top of that. We can make it happen. <laughs> well Cheers, done, boss. Mate. Well done. God, that was dreadful. Truly dreadful. There's nothing about that I would recommend to anyone. I just did my best to stay calm and collected. We're well behind the, the estimated time we want it to be in at. But for the time being, I'm just happy to be here and we've got some cracking, cracking weather for Snowden. I'll get emotional if I'm not quick about it. You and I back on the hill together, marching up, enjoying conversations about the mad experience you've just had, enjoying some deep conversations about the darkness that you figuratively and re re literally marched through. I'm grateful for it, mate. I'm, I'm proud of you. You do an amazing job. We're right at the top. It's not over yet. Another peak. No, another you. peak together, though, and then we're going to crack on again. So. Yeah. I feel elated but also disheartened at the fact that there's 77k to go. So 7.6 of it's back down to where we started. So that would leave basically 70k. So 70k left on my feet. So Saturday morning, 7 a.m., kicked off with a 7.6 kilometer swim and straight into a relaxed transition ahead of a 373 kilometer bike ride. And I came off the bike at about 7.30 in the morning on Sunday. So I spent a full night, sun coming down, sun coming up on the bike, chipping away. So that in itself is quite surreal. It makes me very proud to be sitting here having seen it through because there was a point where I didn't even believe that I was going to be able to see the bike through let alone actually get off the bike and then see the run through because running an ultra off the back of an ultra swim and an ultra run is a interesting thing to process but it's just putting pieces together but I'll be able to unpack that over the next couple of weeks because recovery from this is going to be difficult psychologically physically I think psychologically I'm anticipating six to eight weeks to really feel normal myself again I think it'll be three months before I really feel like I found my groove again with training. And yeah, it's going to be a challenging initial fortnight physically, just with niggles left, right and centre probably appearing and just the wear and tear of a big event, ultimately. lessons that he, he'll get from this he, he won't know what they are yet um, but over the next week month two months as he kind of slowly goes back and looks at the experience that he's had from a different vantage point and reflects on it perhaps talks with me about it he'll start to kind of eat those lessons out and, and grow as a man and, and for me I get to I get to watch that and learn from it and experience it myself. And then there's growth for me too. So it's reciprocal. Thank you, boys. Cool. I fucking held that together all right. Mate, yeah.